festivals, the highlight of the summer. Where there's a party, there's an opportunity. And for drug dealers, business is booming. I'm investigating the dark side of festival season and seeing how far the criminals will go to cash in. You need an avenue to sell them. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's literal business, isn't it? That's a lot of money. A lot of money, yeah. That was it? You just put a weapon in there? Stuck it in the ground, yeah. that's it, it's there. You really got respect for me. No one's gonna come and take your shoes in. If you can run up on my team, then yeah, you're gonna get stuck on me. It's the height of festival season. I've got some rap players in here. I just got a bad shit and put inside. I've already seen how dealers are now trafficking drugs abroad to target festival goers. Mm -hmm. You've unplugged some of the product. Yeah, there's still two more bottles left. Inside you. Oh, shit, man. Are you doing this shit? And how gangs are infiltrating festival security to get drugs to events. I search the people that come in. Nobody searches me. This is the real fucking deal. Wow, so that, that's coke. I want to meet the gangs who, unseen to the eye, go to dangerous lengths to sell large amounts of drugs in festivals. I've made contact with a man that calls himself the General. He's been an active gang member since he was in school. He's agreed to talk to me on the condition he remains anonymous. I've got to ask you, why have you agreed to talk to me? Basically, you just, just want, to, you want to know what goes on on the streets. This yeah. is just going on. So what is your sort of regular work? Drug dealing. Yeah. And how important is festival season to you? So important. That's what, that's what puts bread on my table. And that's what I care about at the day. What do you get into a festival? Everything. Everything? Yeah. Such as? Class A, MD, pills, you know, everything that everyone's going to want, you know? And then obviously then we're trying to get all the security or we just use people to take drugs into the festivals as and when, as we end, you know? What do you mean by that? We've got security in certain places that let us come through. So you've got corrupt security that you're working with, if you Basically, like. Yeah. Well, yeah. I wouldn't say that, yeah. It's not what you know, it's who you know. He tells me he's earned up to £10,000 before selling drugs inside one festival. Have you seen a change in the demand for drugs? Yes, dramatically. Yeah. Oh, tell me a bit about that. Dramatically, like, it's more a lot of people going nuts now for the MD. That's the big killer now for the raves. And pills. Everyone yeah. goes crazy. For, yeah. It's probably one of the best sellers that we do all the time. Like. More and more frequently, super strength drugs are being found inside festivals. Last year in England and Wales, there were 92 deaths caused by MDMA poisoning. With under a week until the gang aimed to flood a festival with drugs, the general has agreed to show me his gang's preparations. I think give it to someone to do the work for him. He drives me to the location where they're waiting. Nearly here now, aren't you? So. Okay. But firstly, they need to book their tickets to the festival. She's agreed to speak to me on the condition that her face is hidden. Can I ask a little bit what, what you're doing? They get sent to her address and then obviously to distribute them to the people that we do the work. Yeah. Why do you use somebody to book the tickets for you? No choice. Mm -hmm. If I was order under my name, they will be there. So you got to keep on guessing. Several different people do different, different roles. As some of the gang members already have criminal records, it's important they don't draw attention to their plans. I've booked two tickets. You want to tell me now, yeah? Yeah. All right, let me know when they reach, yeah? Yeah. I'll see you out later, yeah? He takes me into the kitchen, where the gang are already at work. 
The festival is just days away, so they're preparing their drugs by weighing and wrapping them up into smaller doses, ready for selling. Helping them is T, one of their gang members. If you got a product to sell, yeah, you, you need an avenue to sell it, you? you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's little business, isn't it? Right now, they're packing cocaine, which they will sell for £50 for each amount they wrap. Do you get a lot of requests for the coke <laughs> at festivals? Uh, not as well. More in the evening. More, yeah, like, in the evening? Like, yeah, people are coming down. Yeah, like, not in the start of it. Like, in the start of it, it's my MD pills. And then by late in the evening, people are too much to drink. They want to sober up a bit, yeah. continue yeah. partying. That's when they have starts and that's when they want to sleep. What's the um, profit like on one of these wraps? If you're buying it in bulk? No, no, you no, the profit on every one here, obviously, you probably make 20 pounds every wrap. Yeah. Yeah, it's that easy, yeah. easy. They're also packing up MDMA. So when you buy MDMA, right, do you buy it in bulk? Yeah, everything is in bulk. Everything's in bulk. Everything's in bulk. When it comes to the tablets, I buy them in thousands. I can't buy them in uh, hundreds. And what kind of pills are these? These are MDMA pills mixed with caffeine. Mixed with caffeine? Caffeine, yeah. So you've got ecstasy and caffeine? When I was uh, kind of doing some research into the festivals, I've been reading about like this super strength MDMA, and there's been all sorts of problems with it. You know, people taking way more than yeah, what they should. Yeah. Do you feel like you hold any part in that though? Do you think? Do you feel like so? Say if some, you know, some kid out having a good time takes one of these, would you feel responsible for saying went wrong? Well, if you can't handle it, you shouldn't do it. Do you understand? Like, a lot of people start to panic on drugs and they think, oh shit, this is what's happening in another room. And that's when they start to fuck up. Yeah. All people around them. Did you, you guys know who made them? Uh, yeah, I know the producer still. Yeah. Yeah, he's a friend of mine. That's a Snapchat. Yeah, Snapchat tablet, yeah. Snapchat tablet. But they, but they buy different stamps and they stuff on the tablet. Yeah. How much is each one of these worth? We don't do your man buy to do like two for a tenner. Two for a tenner? Yeah. So you think if you get if you pay one pound for a fuel? Yeah. Two for a tenner, you work out the profit out of a thousand. If the police were to walk in right now, they would be arrested for possession and an intent to supply. A crime that can be punishable with life imprisonment. Do you not worry about the police? Say, say if they came in, right, and they saw what you've just been doing now? What no, kind of... I don't know this address, that's why I use this OK. Right, so it's a different address to your own. I see. The general will often store drugs at a property belonging to one of the gang's younger members, who are at the bottom of the pecking order. Known as youngers, if the police were to arrive and remove the drugs, it would fall on them to account for the loss. Obviously, if it's in your possession, it's down to you. Yeah. You still owe me the money somewhere. So, if I was one of your youngers and I was dealing some raps, I have 48 of them on me. Yeah. And I got nicked, I'm facing a charge. Yeah. You still want your money? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Isn't that an occupational hazard, though? Like. It's a risky take nowadays. Yeah. In the last year, there were over 40,000 knife offences in the UK. Gang violence plays a huge part in this, which becomes horrifyingly clear when I'm introduced to a member the gang referred to as the specialist. Just quick. Shit, yeah. This in his hand. Nothing left to hold it. Yeah. It's the best way in the car. We've all trained to fight like that and hold it. Like yeah. It's the best way. He's another senior member of the gang that has been involved with the general for 15 years. His priority is the protection of the gang members. Tell me about this. Why, why have you got that? This is what some of the ninjas, I call them, will be holding, just in case something kicks off and we need their assistance. I mean, you're in a festival. It's not about business. This is just protection, just in case of situations that could potentially, possibly, that are likely or more than likely to happen. So you, you're the kind of logistics guy? Yeah, I'm the, I'm the brain, the part of the brain. What kind of things are you up against? Just normal life, isn't it? People travel, obviously the police, inspectors, transport police, that kind of stuff, but 
rival rival gangs and organizations doing the same thing. We sometimes see them en route, different, but it just comes with the territory. According to the specialist, he can manage up to 20 gang members aiming to sell drugs in festivals. We dress in a particular way to match the, uh, the event or the festival. And then, same time, it's to change your mannerisms, your behaviour. And that's something that I always get, get through and filter down. So everyone knows they have to be on point, my like mannerisms, your behaviour. And our appearance is the main thing. We have to look, look the part when they're not holding anything or they're more just our eyes and ears and distractions. And um, when you say holding something, it, it, that means carrying drugs, doesn't it? Yeah, oil blaze. We have to establish ourselves at certain points and then hold that down. Just like, say, holding a corner on the street. We've got to now hold that certain area and have, like, a perimeter that we can see but others can't see. What happens if, say, a lone dealer comes along and is on your spot? He'll, he'll get noticed straight away. Yeah? And then he'll get what we call regulated. Regulated? What does that mean? And you will get stopped and searched and then educated. And then we can have an outnumber our man that person and we can just disarm them, regulate them, educate them and maybe just give them a stab in the bum and send them on their way. The drugs are now wrapped, ready for selling inside the festival at the weekend. The general shows me outside. What are you doing? I'm just going to put these in the bin. It's the rubbish. So the rubbish, what do you mean? It's when, when you've wrapped up stuff. Yeah. Obviously, everyone's got rubbish. Yeah. Just quickly just... So you just put them in other people's bins? Random people's bins, everyone gets it. So. And so all of that has your fingerprints and stuff? No, 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 it's all my gloves. The gloves, I see. So the paraphernalia kind of thing. That's... Yeah, the gloves have been disposed of already. So mm -hmm. it's just basically all the, uh, all the materials that we've yeah. used with gloves on. Okay. No traces at all. It's clear that for a drug dealer, festival season is like all their Christmases have come at once. There's some serious money to be made. But with that comes all sorts of dangers, so rival gangs, and they're all fighting for this one market. Then you've got security to worry about. But then he's saying that security, he's got them on board. Then there's the police, and then you've got all these people just kind of partying, having a good time, oblivious to this fact that the drugs they're using are coming in this way. I've come to a festival in London. I want to see for myself how gangs manoeuvre and approach customers. This festival says they operate a robust front door search policy. Soon after I arrive, I'm approached by a man asking if I want any MDMA pills. Whilst he's come over to make his pitch, I notice a couple of others in his group watching on. Once I've agreed to buy, he waves his colleague over and he leaves. The person who's carrying the drugs then comes over and appears to be younger than his colleague. I mean, 10 for one. Or three for 20. I buy a pill, but as soon as we make the exchange, the dealer is gone, looking for the next customer. After they left, they continued the same method of approach. One person setting up the sales, the other person carrying the drugs. I was sold an orange Superman pill. This summer, the National Crime Agency released a warning about a potentially lethal substance that is mimicking MDMA arriving in Britain, and orange Superman pills have been identified as being potentially dangerous. Many of them have been found to contain PMMA, a substance that can be lethal. This isn't the first time they've been recognised as dangerous. Four people died as a result of taking these pills just four years ago. At this festival, the presence of drugs is clear to see, as dealers take advantage of a busy market. And I continued to be approached by other dealers. But with people falling on well inside the event, security and welfare staff have their hands full. I sent the Superman pill off to be tested at a lab, 
where it was found to be slightly stronger than average MDMA. The gang have been in contact to tell me they're ready for the next stage of their festival preparation. Up to 20 members of their gang plan to sell cocaine and MDMA to festival goers. Tonight, the general and the specialists have asked me to meet them in a park. They're going to show me how they might stash weapons close to festival sites so they have protection from rival gangs. So when you come out here to the sort of park area, what are you looking for in terms of stashing a weapon? A distinctive location. Anywhere where I know, like a tree, bush, something concealable. You can walk past it, like the bush behind you. Anything, a tree, a bin, anything. Do you wrap them up or anything, or does it just go in as it is? Sometimes you wrap them up. More times, you're like, I can just kill something quickly for you now, quickly. That was it? You just put a weapon in there? Stab it in the ground yeah. and sit it there. It's as easy as that. You don't even have to, like, no, tape it, nothing. wrap it. It's already been cleaned before, but that's why I've got the gloves off. Yeah, easy access. Basically. That's just, oh, that's just that's like a bodyguard waiting in the bush. So if, if say, um, a kid did find that knife and there was an awful accident, it is, it is it is. you don't feel responsible for that in any way? It'd be unfortunate. It'd be unfortunate that a child yeah, would find it, but I, I could say in many cases that I've it's done possible. this, it's, a it's never happened, so a touch would. It's very unlikely. Exactly. It's very unlikely. Where we put things, it's very, very you know, unique yeah. to a place where people... Kids don't play around here. This is a walkway. If the general decides they need to get a knife, then they have to move quickly. How many knives will you put down ahead of a festival? Depending on the people that we're going with. At least six. At least six, yeah. We don't need no more than six. And why the need for the knives at a festival? Protection. Security. Security protection. This is a, this is a doggy dog world out here, you know? So obviously, ride or die out here now at the moment. So no one wants to fight, everyone wants to stab each other. So if we're doing our thing, obviously we've got to be protected out here. So this is London right now. You heard about the stabbings. Everyone wants to stab yeah. each other. So, so that's just why we've got to herald our team. Last year, though, there was like, there were 285 deaths by stabbings, you know, with knives, yeah. right? Don't you feel some kind of way about putting weapons down no. when we're at the highest knife crime record since, like, 1946? It's either beat, either stab, or be stabbed. So, like I said, we've got people, people you least expect it that come with you in the neck while I'm arguing with you. It's, it's easy, it's like, well, well, we're trying to manage... But well, we don't want that. So you just want to run your business? Yeah, so but if you come run up on my team, then yeah, you're gonna get stopped on. You're yeah, gonna get stopped on. Because you're not gonna see it coming. They show me some other places they look out for when stashing their knives. They look out for accessible places and recognisable landmarks so they're easily retrievable. So what are you doing? You're cleaning it off? Yeah. Why? Fingerprints. They are higher ranking members of the gang, but for the youngers, yeah. it seems like they face the most risk of all. Oh, we're yeah. smart enough to make the youngers carry the yeah. knives, and this is why we're getting what we get in our days. The roads are the roads, isn't it? That's the reason why they're called youngers, because they're younger of us, mm -hmm. you understand? So if I say it's heat at the moment, we need the heat. The youngers coming out of the rave, and he's putting that in his bum cheeks, and he's running back in the rave with it. That's basically that's, that's so the, whole, the whole kind of youngers thing, then, and, and them grabbing the knives would explain why such a high proportion of those 285 killed with knives no, were between the age of 18 to 24. They're the front line, isn't it? The soldiers. The general has now arranged for his drugs to be distributed to the dealers ahead of the festival. Hold on one sec. He's allowed me to witness some of yeah. the drop offs. You're there, yeah? I hurry up quickly, because I've got these things here, I've got to drop it off too quickly, because I've got to move. Say nothing. So this is him? This is my boy now, one of my guys. A good guy there. You got a family? What's up, about the long time? What's going on, my oh, bro? Oh, man, it's mayhem out here. Listen. So we got a little stick. You've got 80 stacks there. You've got the M and the white there. there. You know the you know the price of sixteen on both, yeah? Say nothing. I'll see you tomorrow though, yeah? Be good, be safe. Yeah, come on. Be good. Roll safe, my bro. Yeah, yeah. If the police were to catch them carrying this cocaine and MDMA, 
they'd be arrested for possession and an intent to supply. A charge that could lead to life imprisonment. Were they the raps that I saw you in you your... Live on that, yeah. 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 So or were some of the raps that I believe. Some of the raps. Yeah. Okay, how many did he have there? He had 40 of each. So 40 MDMA. 40 of... 40 coke. And how was he going to get that into the festival? <laughs> His girlfriend or some girl. Plugging it. Or over the fence, no matter whatever means, the way, whatever way we decide that we're going to get over on the day. But and he's now responsible for that? Yeah. Okay. He owes me three grand, 3,200 quid. How much do you think you're going to take home tomorrow? Hopefully five, five quid tomorrow, hopefully. 5,000? Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Shall I wait here? Yeah, wait here, sit back in a minute. The general spends the rest of his night dropping drugs off to his dealers. We had done. So, um, I'm going to say to you, put your head down. Hold on to that quickly, yeah? I'll see you in a little while, yeah? I wanted to see how these guys are getting their knives into festivals. It never actually occurred to me that they would plant weapons ahead of the event. The drugs market at a festival, to them, far outweighs the risk and the need to break that cycle of knife crime. It's, um, it's sad, really. It's filled me with anxiety, to be honest. Like, I'll, I'm worried because I know some really bad things could happen. And it's all for that drug market at the festival. The general has arranged for me to meet one of his soldiers. He's one of the younger drug dealers in the gang. If any gang conflict arises inside a festival, it's his job to collect one of their hidden knives. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, thanks for coming to meet me. So, so I can ask you a little bit about what is it you do? I'm right of you. If you're on the front line, like, what does that involve? Do you, you know what I'm Yeah. Whether it's the police or other gang members, the younger clearly has a lot of risk in talking to me. You seem extremely kind of um, guarded about it, so you know that it's a dangerous thing you're it's involved in. dangerous, man. Everything is dangerous. Yeah. And would you say, though, that where you are on the front line, that you carry the most risk? No. I don't see the risk. You don't, don't see the risk. no risks. And what, what, you don't worry about police, don't security? See no risks. Don't see no well, you just don't look at them? You just... I don't see no risks. Really? Why? I just is... don't see them. Is it easy to do? This is how I've trained myself to think. I mean, OK, so you I'm just don't even want, calculate those. I want yeah. tunnel vision, I mean. And what are you looking at in that tunnel money, vision? Money, 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 money. money. It's just money, man. Everything's money, man. And, and do you want to be doing this forever? No, I don't. No. And what do you think that end is? Mm, early retirement, you know, Early like, retirement. You know, I mean, happy days, everything's you know, happy. I've been interviewing uh, people on the wrong side of the law for, like, more than 10 years now, right? And uh, I've never met anyone who's retired early and been OK. Yeah, yeah. Have you been to any festivals this summer yet? Always at festivals, man. You're always at festivals? You're always at festivals, man. Uh -huh. Yeah, man. Festivals yeah. are a good place to stay like that. You know? A lot of money at festivals. And is that drugs? It's medicine, man. It's medicine. medicine. It's medicine. You call it medicine, why? It's medicine. It's medicine, man. To the people, it's medicine. You know? It helps people. So, like MDMA? MDMA, anything. You know, anything you want to name. How do you avoid your product getting stolen from you? So you mean, so like, don't, I mean, surely you, what you carry on you must be worth some money. Yeah, of course, come on. How do you protect that? It's just respect, isn't it? Yeah. And when you've got respect, I mean, no one's going to come and take your shows, isn't it? He is the guy who's out there on the front line taking all the risks, and he said that he actually just blocks things out, so he's not scared because he can't afford to be scared. It's the day the gang have been preparing for. 
Thank you. Thank you. Up to 20 members are planning to sell drugs inside a festival. I've gone along undercover to see how they operate. It's concerning to think that right now there may be a number of knives already hidden in the site that the police might not be aware of. And there could be young gang members ready to use them if necessary. Thank you. The gang know how to blend into a crowd. And they also know I'm here. And whilst the festival is only just beginning, the security seem alert too. I know the gang aren't happy for me to stick around, so I leave the festival site. I've arranged a final catch-up with the general to see what happened on their drug dealing operations. Hey, yeah, right. how's it going? Yeah, cool. During the festival, some of the gang members shot some videos on their phones. So th th you, this is what you filmed? Oh, yeah, I'll give you a few bits and yeah. you can have a look. These clips are from the youngers who have been selling drugs on behalf of the general. React time, react time, download, download. What's that one? Well, that's that's after that's the after the events of the, the last two festivals that we've done. Wow, so that's your profits? Yeah. That's a lot of money. A lot of money up there. So on the surface, this looks like an awful lot of money, like well, once, massive. Once you get your own stack, everyone's got their own little pits, and no one's ever walking away with that amount. Understand so. so. You said in the video it's the younger um, doing the deal. That's right, yeah. And so the money goes through them and then comes back to you? Currently, or goes yeah. to, comes back to me and goes to the safe base, safe haven, mm -hmm. and it gets just distributed. So the youngers are, are very much on the front line, aren't they? Yeah, they all just go on there because they're on the front line. Yeah. They have to deal with everybody, they take the risk, they take everything. Now, I've got to ask you, um, you know the knives you hid, and we saw how you did that. Yeah. Did you have to use them at any of these events? No. No? No. Not a single one? Not a single one. Really? So there, were, there wasn't that any trouble? Not this time, no. There has been trouble before, but there has not been trouble no more. So the youngers hold the knives? Yeah, obviously. So, so they're not only at the biggest risk of getting uh, stopped by the police or, you know, doing a deal, but they're also the weapons guy. And he says it's a jungle out here for them lot, so you're just ready to ride whatever comes, in it? So it's not cute. No. So if something bad happened to one of the youngers working under you, how would you feel about that? Devastated. You'd be devastated? Yeah. Why? Because obviously one's not there for him. Did you think you were going to retire early? Of course. And look who I am now, still. I'm still out here. I'm doing all right. Hopefully, I'd have to call it winning, but we're moving. That's the best thing. We're moving, we're breathing, we're out here. There's a hell of a lot of money to be made via festival season. There's so much demand for their drugs in those events. So it does strike me, though, that the general is the person who's getting all the cash and yet the youngers are out there taking all the risks and actually seeing only a tiny bit of it. Last year, there were more recorded knife homicides in England and Wales than ever before. And the festivals may be becoming a battleground for rival drug dealing gangs fighting for that same market. Festivals are where we go for a good time, but is it just too easy for gangs to exploit them?